Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today at our weekly live holistic pet health coaching session. I'm Delore DeVore, and I'm sitting in for Dr. Ruth Roberts today. I'm a graduate of her program and also a mentor. And today we're featuring Deb Tobert, who has been in the animal world for a, a long time. I'm just so jealous that she's found her calling very, very early. Um, she is an expert at psychoromatica, a modality that I'm unfam very unfamiliar with. In fact, she had to tell me how to say it <laughs> when we were practicing before this session. So I'm going to um, um, thank you, Deb, and welcome. I'm so excited to hear more about psychoromatica. Um, I'm going to read your bio here. Deb Tobert, AA or AHHP, and you could tell us what that is shortly, is a seasoned holistic healthcare practitioner with a nationwide clientele. Ooh, awesome. Rooted in traditional Chinese medicine, she honed her skills in acupressure at the Tall Grass Animal Institute in Colorado. Deb also holds a rare certificate in animal psychoromatica from the Niana Morag School of Essential Balance with only three such certifications in the United States. Welcome, Deb. This is such an honor to talk to you today. I'm so glad that Dr. Ruth couldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Delara. Great to be here. Great to, great to and, uh, talk about Psychoromatica, which is yeah. one of my very first passions. So. Wonderful. Well, tell us about how you got into a pet health coaching or just the pet environment in the first place. Um, well, that has happened quite some time ago, um, as an early child, I always was very interested in, in, or very drawn to animals as I, as, you know, many, many people are. And I always knew that my calling would be with something with animals. And, um, my initial bachelor of science degree was in, um, clinical lab science, which was, is a great background because I can read lab results and it's, it's a laboratory background. Um, and so I can read lab results and I know what lab results mean. And so I can uh, discuss these very easily with, with uh, veterinarians. But I also, I always knew that that wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. And um, um, in 1999, there was a cat uh, who was very dear to my heart, a Siamese cat, Simi, who, who, um, developed pancreatitis and or 97 or 98 possibly, but she developed pancreatitis and she, the, the vets didn't have any options for me other than, you know, you know, and end her life. And it just, it didn't feel, it just didn't feel like that was what she really wanted at that time. So um, like I told Delora previously, that was back pre-internet. So back to, you know, I went to the library and, and started doing some researching and um, came across Richard Pitt Karen's book, um, which is about homeopathy. And at that time, um, so learned about changing her diet and about homeopathy. And um, I believe he has some Chinese herbs in there too. So, um, and then, oh no, Four Paws and Five Directions would be the Chinese herbs. Those were the two books that were my Bibles for quite some time. And um, I still have my original copies right up here in my <laughs> bookshelf. So, and, and that was the beginning of the journey of um, alternative or complementary or, you know, whatever your preference is to call it. And, um, and she lived two or three more years, very well and healthy. And, um, and then, and then the journey began of better health for myself, better health for my animals. And, um, and then looking for how could I fit this into my, um, as my profession, which did not happen until maybe 10 years later when I came across Nayana, um, a local person in Wisconsin um, was bringing her Nayana um, and she was fortunately only half an hour from my home in central Wisconsin here. And I met Nayana. I immediately knew this was something that I, that I wanted to do. Um, she talked about doing a practitioner certification at that time that didn't come to be, but um, that you would have to do her certification, the uh, animal psychoromatica certification to be part of it. And so that, that began. And, um, 
that was like I said my first certification and i finally finished that in 2011 although i was already practicing a little bit before that so we have a, a comment from audrey that says i love niana <laughs> so oh. she has a following <laughs> He, oh, she's known worldwide. I mean, she she does, and now she has an online class. At the time, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to spend time with her for my level one and my level level two. My level two, um, I finished online, but the level one I did in person. So, and she doesn't travel anymore. So, I'm really honored that I could um, spend that time with her. So, um, but and. Um, the that philosophy of animal psychoromatica and, the, and it's the psych the psyche part of it that really um it's the psyche is your conscious and subconscious mind working together for health and that's where the psych part of it comes and aromatica of course is rom, uh, aromatics mm -hmm. essential oils and um hydrosols and um and blending, blending them appropriately for cats and dogs. And um, she feels the basis for her, um, her the APA philosophy, animal psychromatica, we call it APA philosophy is um, base is stress reduction. And that if you can help the psyche um, handle or deal with stress appropriately, then you will have physical health and vitality also. And stress is, of course, we all, we, it's a necessary thing in our lives. You know, it's the fight or flight. It's, it's very necessary, but it's the chronic stress where, you know, it doesn't shut off and you don't return to homeostasis that um, then, you know, the, the adrenal issues and, and well, and so it becomes chronic stress. And that's where um, that's where the issues can really come in from itching to anxiety to leaky gut or dysbiosis, as we know it. And, um, you know, indigestion issues, inflammation, chronic stress, we all definitely leads to inflam inflammatory issues in the body. So um, that's the basis for my practice is to help reduce um, stress. Um, and now EMFs, <laughs> you know, which is a different type of stress that wasn't present when I began, um, that and helping people be, be realize that also reducing stress in their own life helps reduce stress in your four legged family members life. And so that you all you both can be, you know, um, more vital. And initially, I used just essential oils or aromatics. Now, as I've gotten more certifications and branched out and I'm um, I've learned more about tra traditional traditional Chinese medicine and um, acupressure and homeopathy I use those modalities also um, not only solely um, um, essential oils um, but the basis of that first certification um, and that philosophy has stayed with me and um, that is very much um, something that I always address um, at some point with the clients and some more are more open to that and, than others. What a wonderful compliment when you came across Dr. Roberts' pro uh, a program to offer your clients. It, it just fits yes. so perfectly. <laughs> It absolutely did. And it, it absolutely did. I've known about Dr. Ruth for quite some time. And I referred clients to her when I was, you know, was more, when something was more challenging than I felt I, that I could help with. And yeah, absolutely. I mean that, um, you know, cause we delved more into the physiology of, of diseases too. And, um, the, the whys and, um, and yeah, I felt, so blessed when I came across, and I was once again knew I just had to take that that class, that cat, even though it didn't fit into my life very well at the time. But it <laughs> was, does just do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it was. I'm just fortunately, it's very flexible too. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's she was it was very flexible. So I got you know got it done when I got it done, and um, great. Yeah, and and the 
the, the, the piece that was missing for me, and I had recommended crock pet many times, but the piece that was missing for, for me when um, is how to adjust the diets for different physiological disease states, you know, and um, for the kidneys and for kidney issues, for cancer, for, you know, the rotational diet, for severe allergies, you know, all of that, that, that really, uh, I feel like everything has come full circle and I really can offer the whole, you know, the whole package and um, a great place to go for be able to have people order um, supplements too, you know, and her fabulous crock pet total body support, you know, is um, vitamin mineral blend is, you know, even the veterinarian I go to said she feels it's one of the best on the market. Oh, so it really is. And I don't think there's anything else out there like that. Um, and, and folks can add it to their, their regular diets as well as a, a nice uh, multivitamin. It's got uh, the taurine and it's got great, um, uh, organ meats and B vitamins is, is pretty much ha has everything um, you need to complete yeah, a diet. Lots of B vitamins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I mean, even if at some point where they, they opportunity or they, you know, they don't have the time to cook or have a, or they need to go to freeze dried for a little bit for whatever reason, I always, you know, to still feed the total body support, you at least feel like they've, at least that they have still good nutrition, um, mm -hmm. unprocessed nutrition so but yeah so yeah. if you were going to work with a client on psychromatica what does that process look like um <laughs> that's a, was that a good question <laughs> that was a good question you know i'm just like thinking I, <laughs> what you know oh, what yeah. is my right process of course there's the questionnaire you know and to fill out the question you know and i do try to pinpoint since I'm traditional Chinese medicine based, and that was part of this um, Nayana certification. That was my first introduction to Chinese um, herbs. And she, even for choosing essential oils, we try to hone in on what element the um, animal is. And sometimes, so there's five element questions, the traditional, um, the, of course, traditional Chinese medicine has the five elements and there's those questions on the questionnaire too. And, and that's where I usually start. Um, so just to, for the folks that don't um, aren't familiar with traditional Chinese veterinary and medicine, it is so cool that you can, uh, based on this um, thousands of year old practice, um, based on your pet's personality, are they, um, you know, very aggressive? Are they happy? Are they the life of the party? Um, are they shy? Yeah. 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 They, you can actually um, determine an element uh, based on um, uh, the elements that Chinese veterinary TCVM has set up and you can um, uh, understand what kind of foods they need. So if they're a fire dog that, that is uh, uh, reactive and uh, very active, then um, he needs some cooling foods. Um, like a rabbit and uh, things of that nature. So um, just just to kind of refresh people uh, or those who don't know, and Dr. Ruth's program um, has um, uh, module three. And, and since I'm a mentor, I, I can <laughs> pull this up pretty easy in my head. <laughs> I was like, I'm progressing, Delora. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many homeworks I've done, but it actually, I love doing the homework because um, I learn something every time, and it's it's just so fulfilling to me too um, to do a little bit of research from my clients all the time. Oh, I mean, it's it's wonderful. I'm, I've just grown so much with having such a great. Um, uh, relationship with um, the other pet coaches and Dr. Dr. Roberts. It's, it's pretty awesome. But anyway, that's TCVM. It's so cool. And if you decide you want to take the program, there's so much information on it. And in each module, you'll have more information on it. It's, it's just amazing. And my, my head was uh, um, because I just do the, um, uh, the holistic stuff. I never been introduced to the TCVM. And I was like, oh, no, 
no, I don't want to do that. It's just, I mean, it's mind blowing and, but it's so accurate and so cool that it's, it's grown on me. So, um, I, one of our fellow mentors, um, Michael Daly, he's really into it. So he's my inspiration. If you're watching Michael, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it is, uh, I mean, it's an ecosystem really the, where, of the five elements and the five seasons, you know, and, and it's a whole, it's a whole picture. And so, you know, sometimes, well, why does my, why does my dog itch so much in August? Well, you know, it's, it's the fire element time of year and, you know, the energies are up and out and in, there's a lot of heat. And, and so it's really, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes it's challenging to pinpoint, Animals are easier than humans, I'll just say. People will always ask me, well, what element do you think that I am? And I, I just say, I send them to a website that they can look at themselves. Based on what it's day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, because because it's what you see. Although, although in the animal world, too, I have um, a lot of times you see the imbalance. You see the metal imbalance, or you see the you know the wood imbalance, the aggression from you know the wood versus who the animal truly is because of stressors in their lives, whether it's mm-hmm. trauma or et cetera. So, and I I have misread them, and when you help support that, you often see the true the true nature come through. Like this dog truly isn't a wood element; it's a wood element imbalance, and so. Um, that is the, the challenging part, but that's where I start. That's where okay. I'll, I'll, I'll start to see, you know, cause that'll give me some clues to, um, okay. Uh, wood element, gallbladder and liver aggression. Okay. There's probably some, you know, even if I don't have lab values, we're showing some liver, um, and, um, liver enzyme elevation, which you don't always necessarily have to have because, well, that's another hole, but um, you don't necessarily have to have, but, <laughs> but um, anyway, so that, so you, you, I would start with, you know, milk thistle with a liver cleanse or something like that. And, and, um, and then often um, because I do see clients still in the office at this time, use some essential oils to support um, liver or homeopathy or um, I'm empathic. So I can, um, and I douse. And so I have the ability to pick appropriate um, um, supplements um, that are the best energetic match because there's a lot of great ones out there. And I, um, people will often come with, you know, bags full, a bag full of supplements that um, are really great, but sadly, none of them are energetically matching the dog. So they're not, they're not supporting, they're not, um, helping out as best as they could be. And, and maybe not at all, even though it is supposedly one, you know, for aggression or for um, leaky gut or, or whatever it may be. So, um, so that's, that would be the, the next, um, after the questionnaire, you know, then meet up with them either via zoom or the phone or in, in my office and uh, do acupressure session. And there's a bladder meridian that runs along the spine, which has an association point, uh, or which is a point for every meridian on the body. And I, I can often sense which one is um, out of balance by doing, by just checking the association points. Um, so that's helpful. That's beneficial too. Not necessary, but can be beneficial. And, uh, and then go from there. Where is the, um, always talk about diet. It's, um, you know, the old adage, you are what you eat is um, very much, you know, very true. Um, the try to remove them to a less processed diet, um, help feed less processed diet. I have over 30 clients probably at last count that are cooking now. So that's awesome. Oh, um, that's great. Um, I was a raw food advocate at one point. Um in my career um, and have learned that raw food is not always appropriate for every dog. Yeah. Based on Um, the dog. Mm -hmm. Yep. And based on their element, based on what's going on, you know, that can cause dampede issues. Um, And I learned that from Dr. Ruth. I was, did not, you know, couldn't figure out why this was not because there are some holistic veterinarians that are 
no, only raw, has to be raw, has to be raw, you know, and, um, and I also like Dr. Ruth's like, you know, thought process of the sustainability of supporting the pet raw pet food industry. If everybody fed raw, I mean that just think of how many more animals on the feed we would need on the feedlots. And, and actually she said, we couldn't, we couldn't actually even support it, support if everybody fed raw. Um, so I liked that philosophy from her too, about the sustainability aspect of it. And um, I'm very much into um, and, and to, because it can be challenging to find local raised, um, I mean, the Midwest, we don't have, I don't have any problem finding locally raised beef and pigs and chickens. I mean, I, it's all, I can, um, but not everybody has that accessibility. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, but, um, so, so learning more about cooked foods was a big step for me. And I've seen every single dog I have transitioned to it, except for two, um, and that was not the fault of the dog, um, do well. So, um, so that, did I answer your question? <laughs> well, yeah. So, um, the, the psychorhematica is it, um, um, oh, on, on top. So I'm just, I just want to know, um, it's a philosophy, really. what's yeah. The philosophy and the mechanism, how does the mechanism work? Cause I'm, I'm learning all about this. Cause when I've, when I first um, saw that you were going, going to talk on this, I was like, what? I've never heard of this. And it's been around for a long, long time. So you're, you're educating me in the process. So this is, I'm really, really enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Nayana learned from, um, and I was going to look that up. So, I mean, she, this is not something she kind of brought the whole picture together, but um, zoo pharmacognosy, which is, um, a lot animals self-medicating has been around for a long, long time. And that really is the basis of APA because it's, um, allowing animals to choose their own herbs, essential oils, um, not saying you need this. They are, so we, you, um, so you blend an essential oil based on what you feel is appropriate. There's a uh, base oil, um, just lots of different base oils based on what's going on too, such as sunflower, olive oil, rosehip oil, um, hemp oil. It, it's endless list um, of, so you choose the appropriate base oil and you blend essential oil into this base oil, probably for cats you know, just a couple drops into five mils of the essential oil to the base oil, um, a little bit more for dogs or horses. And, um, and you just offer it, you don't apply, um, you offer the oil, the essential oil to the dog, the cat or the horse, you give them the choice of self medicating, um, or not. And a lot of times people will say, well, they ran off. Well, and initially that can often happen because the effect is so great because it's so quick. They sniff the essential oil, the um, molecules from the, they smell it. The molecules go up into the, through the nose and attach to the receptors in the brain that affect um, what needs to happen for vitality or for healing. It, it, the, it, and it's immediate. It's immediate. The receptor and, um, and then, um, and unlike pharmaceuticals, where they attach, they, you know, they have to go through the stomach, they attach to the receptors, they fall off, and you have to, you know, and then you have to give it again 12 hours later. With essential oils, it changes, it attaches to the receptors and it help it changes the behavior. It changes the or can change their behavior. It can change, you know, the physical uh ailment. And and then yes, they do fall off, but th there's long lasting effects. And there's no, um, um, there's a lot of bad press on the internet about using essential oils for cats. No, you should not use um, undiluted essential oils on a cat. 
ever. Well, rarely. Um, because then there are certain the cats lack the enzymes to break down certain essential oils or certain components of essential oils in the liver. And that is the reason why you shouldn't. If they inhale the essential oils, especially a blended essential oils, which mimics what is in nature, then it's processed through the liver or through the kidneys. And there is no issue with using them that way whatsoever. And, um, and if you also allow the cat or dog or horse or reptile or um, bearded dragon, I've done uh, birds, birds, we usually use hydrosols. I can talk about hydrosols a little bit if we have time. Um, but um, for feather pick plucking essential hydrosols work phenomenally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I can't remember what my sentence was going to be. Yeah, but anyway, okay. yeah. I have a question. Um, that I may have a question that may take us down another rabbit trail, but um, that seems yeah. to be. So anyway, was that the, was that the mechanism you were looking for? Yeah, was, um, yeah. actually, and and that is my question. Um, so I know that we um, don't recommend that. Um, uh, the synthetic scents, candles, plug-ins, dryer sheets, um, right. detergents, um, that comes, goes straight into, um, uh, your, your mu mucous membranes and goes into, um, uh, into the bloodstream. But can you, uh, explain how that is, uh, affects on the opposite end of, um, of how the, the essential oils are healthy, but those are unhealthy. Is that, is that something that you could explain to me? <laughs> well, synthetic. Yeah. You, and you, you got it. You know, the, the synthetics are chemicals. And so, you know, they, they, they're endocrine disruptors, most of them. So um, there's, you know, long-term health effects. And, um, but if, you know, even if you're, even if you're diffusing essential oils, you know, you should only be doing like six drops into a whole big diffuse into a diffuser. So it's very, very dilute, very dilute. And so it's not, once again, it's more blended towards what would be what they would chew on in nature. You know, if they come across catnip, that's, um, they chew on catnip. It's not straight extracted essential oil. You know, it's, it's, there's just a bit of catnip oil in there. So, but the essential oils are, um, once again, like I said, they're, they're, they're excreted, they're absorbed into the bloodstream in a very dilute manner through that inhalation method. Um, but they're not, and, and they are diluted. And so they are more natural, if you want to use that word, but it is the more the dilution you would see in nature and then um, excreted through the kidneys. Um, so there's no long term lasting um, ill or negative effects like the chemicals would have, which are often, like you said, endocrine disruptors and um, toxic because they're absorbed through the liver. They're dealt with through the liver. And that's where the liver starts getting um, not able to function as well as it can be because of the continual um, uh, that liver congestion that happens from those particular chemicals and toxins. Um, and essential oils are not are not toxins. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Um, very helpful. Um, so when you uh, put together. Um, a a protocol with psychoromatica is that something that you um, diffuse or you just apply it to the fur how did how does that work i um i don't know if i have a little five mil i i often do little uh blended bottles um so this would be they're about this size um so this is this is an essential oil this is lemon um little five mil bottle so okay. I, I would take an, an empty five mil bottle like that and um, put the base oil in it. And then probably, you know, for a cat, um, using lemon is very beneficial for the kidneys. Um, it's also considered emotionally uplifting and um, a lighter attitude and um, 
if there's depression or um, helps out with, with that too. But so I would put a couple of like probably two drops into that bottle and then I would just offer it to the cat or the dog. Um, and you don't have to tear, you need this, put it right under the nose. They're, they smell things. Cats can smell other cats a mile away. They smell, you know, they know. So you, and, and if, and if you, for, and cats are cagey, you, uh, you sometimes would just have to sometimes set it down and walk away and, and, um, you can mind me peek around a corner and see what they're thinking and stuff. So, but you can leave the bottle sitting there open and they can, um, you know, for 10, 15 minutes and they can self-medicate. You close it up. Um, and once or twice a day, um, the longer you, um, the more often you do it, the, the less, you know, the more quicker the healing will happen. And the thing is you, um, you should see the changes within a couple of weeks. And if you don't no, if you have, or no longer, certainly than a month, if the, nothing has happened in the month, well, then I missed the mark. Um, we need to re reassess to see what else, uh, or there's real subtle changes and then we move on. So you don't use essential oils forever. You use them for a short time. The healing has happened. You move on. Um, so it's different than like even Chinese herbs or mm -hmm. um, even most Western herbs because um, it's, um, it's very short term. It should be short term, um, an option, a short term option. Um, but it can be many, you know, repeated because it's like layers, you know, of the onion. Sure. So well, pets, um, yeah. uh, cats and dogs and all pets um, are very intuitive. So if they're choosing their own um, remedy, um, I would think that you always, always, is that a good term? Um, have mm, most success? Them, yeah. yeah. The, the, the drawback is that often they're a little bit tentative, you know, when they're at my office. So so they, they may not be willing to choose, uh, you know, totally choose. Um, that's, the, that's the drawback. However, okay. I have seen a dog or a horse pick out an oil out of my bag of 100 oils. Wow. She picked out, she put her nose on an oil, a specific oil. And oh my gosh, she, she was, um, she had had a lot of previous trauma. I would have to look back which oil it was. Um, I thought I would always remember that, but now I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but she picked out a single oil from a whole. So you would think there's a hundred cents in there. How could they hone in on one particular oil? But you are exact, absolutely right. You know, and, and that's part of, of reducing stress, allowing them the choice to pick we, we dictate every single thing in their life when they can go potty, when they can go poop, when they can eat, when they can play, when they can this, when they can that, you know, to allow them the choice of self-medicating, how freeing and, you know, can that be? And how, how much can that enlighten how your relationship with your cat and dog and just only make, you know, increase, I mean, they love us no matter what, but you know, the bond of, oh, wow, you are going to let me pick this out. Wow. You know, so it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, a um, it's a pretty, you know, and, and so that's stress reduction. That's, that's stress reduction again. So, I mean, we think, well, what do dogs and cats have to be stressed about, you know, but just being with us is stressful. <laughs> It is. It is. It's not natural. It's not a natural environment. It's not. I mean, it, it, we, like I said, once again, we dictate every little thing that they can do when they can go out and sniff. Well, come on. I got, I got to get to work today. Let's go. You know, you can't sniff today. Well, I want to sniff. No, you can't sniff. We have to go, you know, so we, that alone is stress. That alone is, is stress and it's chronic mm -hmm. stress. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why is my dog anxious? Well, Hmm. You know, you know what, what, and what little thing can we change to help them or, mm -hmm. or what can you be with your aunt, with your dog or a cat for five or 10 minutes, at least once a week without your phone, just sitting there breathing with them and just being with them, not caring, always caring. And, and I am, that has been a journey for me 
because I like, I have all this knowledge. Yeah, I'm going to use it. You know, they're going to, they're going to get this. They're going to get that there, you know, and even my own animals have said through animal communicators, you know, please just spend time, just yeah. be with us. So that's less stress reduction too. So once again, that's the basis, one of the basis of a, or one of those um, philosophies. I have to, I have to tell you, Deb, um, since we talked, um, you know, I, have I give Hazel supplements and, and, you know, I've never thought about letting her choose. I'm like, here, you're getting this, you're getting this, you're getting this. And um, just because I know all this stuff and she's probably like, mom, yeah. I'm tired of taking yeah. this. Supplement. Yeah. Yeah. I always give my animals a break from supplements too, because um, you know, and, and um, the, well, they won't eat it. You know, I'm like, okay, well, they don't want that one. You know, and, and I know it's money. We spend good money on that and God darn it, they're going to eat it. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, yes. But, and we think we know what's best for them, but do we, you know, do we really? So. Yeah. I, that is just so cool. I, I, you know, they can I, choose Chinese herbs. I mean, it doesn't have to be oils. I mean, they can choose homeopathy is energetic medicine. They can choose. It doesn't have to be by scent. You know, they live mm -hmm. by the energy, the rhythms of the earth. And so they could choose essential. They could choose homeopathy. They can choose Chinese herbs. They can choose. So, you know, all of it. I wish that I could, you know, do that more. Um, cause it's, it's, I've done presentations and when dogs and cats choosing and, um, it's so much fun, but you know, when, unfortunately, when you're on a time schedule in your own practice, but it's something people can do at home. Um, even, you know, buy three essential oils, you know, lemon or lavender and maybe peppermint or, you know, based on, um, Nayana has a book. Well, I don't know if I should be promoting Nayana's book. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, so, um, we have a question yeah, from Stephanie. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> um, from Stephanie about certain brands, would you, um, of essential oils, would you like to follow up with her, um, later on? Are you comfortable sharing your, since, uh, uh, Dr. Ruth really doesn't have essential oils on her, uh, on her website, um, other than wise woman, which is, um, those are herbals. Um, so I don't know if she would mind us yeah. talking about yeah. brands or not. What do you think? Uh, you know, um, maybe, maybe she could touch base with me. She could, okay. you know, Deb Tybert at gmail.com. Um, I'd be more than happy to help her with what, what brands, um, and, and some of, in the, um, the simple, the simple, um, philosophy behind essential oils for purchase for me is, you know, how, how they raise them, um, and, and what soils, you know, are they being repeatedly, Right, you know, not to mention any names, but are they, you know, multi-level marketing where they're out for the dollar versus, you know, um, you know, so I have seen significant differences in, in, um, healing being offered by, you know, um, different lines of essential oils. And, um, my first, I'll just say my first love of, and I learned those from, Niana was kibashi um, and they're out of England and um, but they're it's not that easy to get them um, uh, because so you have to do a big order thing. but there's other good ones in the US too oh yeah and they they um, I know that several sources of them they um, harvest them by the moon phases and um, they're just really into it which I'm so grateful that they've taken that interest because I'm like oh, I don't know just you know go to the weed lot and get some dandelion <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i mean yeah there's even for herbs you know different harvesting them at different you know roots should be harvested in the fall and and yeah. that's what i look at like you know for my for my herbs and stuff like that too so um well so yeah, yeah we that's, have... oh go ahead i'm sorry i didn't know i'm to... just saying so that i that i think i feel that that's an important choice and there's probably a lot of lines out there that i am not even aware of you know so 
you know, oh, absolutely. And they're coming online all the time just because people are so um, uh, interested in it and, um, and, and have a new, a new way. So um, yeah. we're open to, to everyone that's got um, a good holistic and sustainable practices. Yeah, you exactly. That I was just going to say the sustainability question for essential oils is a big one because people are saying, you know, is that sustainable? Um, mm -hmm. That much selling of that much essential oil, you know, is that sustainable? Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that, a, it's that's, a, that's growing a big, thing. it's a big question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have a question, um, Deb from Angel Nance. She says collapsed trachea. What can I do to make comfortable? Uh, that's a complicated, um, that's a complicated, uh, diagnosis if, and I think really, and I, I'm trying, I, I don't want to just brush you off, but, um, I really think you need to work with a co one of the coaches for, for that. Um, because so many it's, questions, it's complicated, um, so in, in Chinese medicine, Yes. And it's a, in the Chinese medicine, in Chinese medicine, it is a, um, a yin and yang displacement. Um, and so, um, or separation, should I put it that way? So, um, yeah, um, I, and, and certainly I'll just one quick one is to have, uh, use a harness, a low harness, um, for walking, um, because certainly you don't want any pressure on the neck, um, to, you know, to worsen or, you know, worsen the, um, di the symptoms. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. I don't know how you feel about that, Delora. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and Angel, uh, Deb is one of, one of our, pet health coaching stars. So Deb, tell us how um, we, people can reach you again. Um, my email, my business name is Deb's Whispering Tales and it's debswhisperingtales.com without apostrophe behind uh, the, the S. It's, it's not D-E-B apostrophe S, it's just D-E-B-S, Deb's Whispering Tales. Mm -hmm. Um, dot com. My contact info is on there, but Deb Tybert at Gmail. If you see my name, it's Deb Tybert, all small at gmail.com for um, email contact also. But my phone number um, calls, not text, please, um, is on the is on the um, my website, too, which is being revamped. But the my contact okay. info is definitely on there. My contact so info is still on um, uh, Angel says that um, no harness or collar was ever used. So that sounds like some sort of um, a genetic issue that, that makes it a, a, a little more complicated, in fact. Possibly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, I wonder. Yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm just thinking yeah. so about it. I, I wish there were some simple answers, but just like for uh, for humans, it, there's so many factors that um, that contribute to a particular illness, unless it's a, um, a traumatic injury. Like we were thinking that um, uh, collapsed trachea was in the, in uh, initially. So um, very interesting, Angel, and um, we got some health co health coaches that can help you because we would just. Um, we would love to get into the weeds on this. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness. Is, is there anything else that you would like to add, Deb? I was just looking up for essential oils to collapse trachea, but I don't think she okay. has anything. Neana's book. Uh, she don't think she has anything for. Um... Okay. Angel says, I know there's no cure. I just want to uh, make her as comfortable as possible. So yes. Right. Right. Um, yep. Yeah, and that's that's um, absolutely the goal, um, you know, for some of these chronic in conditions, and 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 it can happen. I mean, um, us, you know, in 
I'll get on my soapbox a little bit, but in Western di in Western medicine, they love, you know, diagnoses and put a label on it. And which often adds a lot of fear to what um, is happening with the four-legged family members. And they will say there's no cure. There's no, um, you know, nothing can be done, but something can always be done. And um, something support just to reduce, like I said, back to reducing the stress and reducing the fear. And if impending Kinichi, you know, is uh, impending death is coming, then to help um, honor that with grace and dignity. So there's there's that. Excuse me for getting emotional. Because I told you, don't you cry? Because I'm going to add to it. <laughs> we we'll just have to cut off the lives. So we can <laughs> yes, but but it, so it, it can always. There's always something that can be um, added to the to that animal's life. Um, in your life, because if it affects them, it affects you. Um, yeah. And that's that's what so, you got you in this in the first place. Uh, Angel yeah. says that um, she uses some oils and she stains them in the shower. Um, eucalyptus and peppermint oil steam. Um, mm -hmm. And um, she she 100 uh, percent agrees with you that there's something that can be done. Sure. Yeah. Have her have her touch base. And, I, you know, I would love to um, talk to a fellow you know, for, that is is as crazy about essential oils as I am. I, and I still love <laughs> essential oils, even though I don't, you know, use them um, as much as I used to. But it, it is my first love. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah. So yeah. you told me a story about a puppy. I love this self-selection thing. It's just like a, a total revelation to me instead of me um, with my my normal uh uh, forever. This is the right thing to do. You're going to do this. So, yeah. um, so tell me um, about the puppy that, that you, it was it your puppy that you asked him to self-select an oil. A puppy. Or you told me about, and then you took him to, um, a, um, TCVM practice practitioner. Was it you who told me the story? Anyway, you presented an oil to the, the, the dog and, the dog chosen oil. Here I am telling the story and I don't even yeah, remember. Yeah, that's great. Just, that's great. Maybe I'll <laughs> get <laughs> and, um, and then you had an appointment later. Maybe this was some, oh, it was one of my students. I apologize. Mm -hmm. She's, um, we, oh gosh, we have gotten some amazing students in that just uh, have their fingers all into everything. She does the, the tapping and, um, Oh, I love tapping. Oh my gosh. And, and does the essential oils well. as well. She told me the story that she got a puppy and that she allowed it to, and all this is coming to me at the same time. And it's just blowing my mind um, <clears throat> that she allowed the puppy to self-select and she had an appointment with a TCVM practitioner the next day. And he chose the same oil, oil. for the pup that the dog did. <laughs> It's just so incredible. They are so much smarter and sentient than we give them credit for. So yes, exactly. And and I mean that's one of my big missions too to help people understand that you know they're they're here to support us, but you know and and we think we choose them, but they honestly choose us, and they come in. Each one comes into our lives for a particular reason, and to help with us with a particular, which is not always evident at the time, um, thing. But um, and they just even offer, if it's patience, yeah, they're, they're well, here to yeah. help you with patience. <laughs> yeah, or you know, joy. You know, like I know my puppy just came into my life. Now he's fire element. There is no way in heck I would have chosen a fire element puppy. If I wouldn't know he was a fire element. And he is just joy, 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 joy. Oops, this is falling. Joy, you know, and, and obviously it's like Mark, my husband, Mark, I was like, we need more joy in our life, obviously. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like happy, 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 play, play, play. Aww. So, um, you know, so, so yeah. 
I have another question for me. You, um, you've told me that um, your heart belongs to cats. And um, so we have a question from Stephanie that what are your two favorite uh, TCVM herbs for cats that's usually eaten by them? Uh, well, it totally depends on what's going on with them. Um, T, um, the, is there, I mean, if there's concerns, often with cats where I see their end of, or uh, there's chi insufficiency. So, um, the way um, is a, is a good one, um, which they will eat. And, Cats, if they haven't been fed a variety of diet, uh, uh, cats will generally eat what they've been fed in the first six weeks of their lives. So that that texture is what they're going to want to eat. Whatever fla the whatever flavors they've been introduced to um, earlier on, the more the better is what they're going to eat. Chinese medicines, depending on what's being used, whether it's bitter for liver or sweet you know, more sweet for stomach, that'll make a difference on whether they, they'll eat that, eat it or not. So there's, I don't really have two favorites. Um, although I try to look for, um, liquid, um, t uh, Chinese herbs. So that for cats, because that often seems to be a better way to go. And you can, um, or if you do use powder, I often add a little honey or a raw goat's milk, to mix it in to get them to eat it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, so I, there, I don't honestly have, you know, two favorites. It totally depends on what's going on with them. Um, and well, you mentioned one for liver, liver. What about kidney? Is there an essential oil that, um, really affects the kidney? Oh, essential oils or, oh, I thought you said Chinese herbs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. An herb. Pardon okay. me. Pardon me. Thank you. Um, well, Romania, Romania um, is very good help with the kidneys, um, and 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 they're they're blends. You know, Chinese herbs are mostly blends. We don't you generally don't use Chinese herbs one, um, and I don't because I don't have you know um, the knowledge to be using a specific Chinese herb by itself, generally. And um, but they're always blends, um, so it would be like Romania assist kidney is a good blend um, that, that Herbsmith um, has oh, yeah. out. Right. Herbsmith is a good place for, um, if you're looking, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember what her name was, but if you're looking for Chinese Angel. herbs, um, Angel, Herb, uh, Herbsmith, Herbsmith.com has um, Chinese herb blends specifically for dogs and cats. I see they just came out with some new, I've worked with Herbsmith for many, many years. Um, I've been, you know, been practiced like 15, but, um, the, but they, they've just come out with some new bladder, um, I believe and kidney herbal, herbal blends. I, I haven't looked into them yet, but I just happened to see them when I ordered some herbs. So, so kidney would definitely be for cats more than, um, anything. So sure. Sure. There's, um, the herbsmith.com that has the, um, uh, I think it's, it's got herbs with ink, I think, dot com. Herbs, herbsmith rx.com is their uh, uh, Chinese herbals. But you'll well, need to get... Herbsmith.com has Chinese herbs too. Oh, does they it? Chinese... Yeah, they're just not veterinary. They're not a practitioner or veterinary. Okay, um, I get they're... into the rx one, okay. The rx is um, often, often stronger and the ones that we can order and are stronger, um, slightly different blends. Um, but there's like bladder care, you know, those are, those are all Chinese herb blends too. Um, they have a lot of, most of the herb Smith stuff. It, it, and then they have the Western herbs, which is, they just have a few like milk thistle, but almost everything they offer is, um, cause Chris Basent is, she's traditional Chinese made, you know, based, um, from Wisconsin. She's here in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. How about that? <laughs> I saw her. I saw her when she was just a practicing vet. She saw my horses. So that's yeah. so cool. Well, it is a small community. So, um, and speaking of if, if you're watching and you have made it 
to us to almost an hour and you are not a, um, a student or a graduate of Dr. Roberts Holistic Pet Health Coaching Program, please consider it. Please consider it. it, it yeah. If this fascinates you and, and it is your heart. Um, you don't have to have the background I do. Dolores, no. said you came from construction? Where did you say your yeah. background is? <laughs> yeah. So I, my, my education and my career has been marketing uh, for 30 years and, um, and currently at a construction company that I've given my notice because I want to do this full time. It is not, um, it is, it is not work. It is, I learned something and it is my heart. So, um, Me too. Yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I already had a, a practice prior to taking Dr. Ruth's class, but many don't. And, um, and you know, there's mentors to support you through this, through the process and Delora is a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, I think it's a, um, and, and it's a great way to learn how to be an advocate for your four-legged family member and to be able to talk to veterinarians and to, um, because a lot of times we get, you know, us who are looking into al alternative and complementary get blown off as, you know, being stupid or come on, that doesn't work. You know, I, I've been there, I've been there. And, um, so um, and then to help others do that same thing, maybe eventually if you choose to, but it's, it's so empowering. It's, it it's so empowering. I, I, and I love empowering others. I love empowering, you know, to help them with less vaccinations and less, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, how, you know, well, just everything, you know, less flea and tick and less, what, what, what are the options and, and mm -hmm. be able to, you know, and for me, you know, um, how to have um, to send them to a vet to get diagnostics, to get lab results and not immediately be convinced that they need to do the pharmaceutical route, you know, that there are other options. So um, that's what this course can give you. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's um, it's been um, exceptional. Yep. Yep. It's all things you can do at home. And I love what you say, Deb, that um, a, a holistic pet health coach is a liaison between a pet parent and the veterinarian. So while you have the vet that um, can diagnose and treat and prescribe, and um, uh, often the pet is um, in, in need of that, say, Apoquel, because they're scratching themselves to death. I get it. You want them, the, the, oh, um, their, their comfort is our number one priority, but what we help you do is work in the background to support the body and um, allow health to grow. And that way you can wean off of those, um, hopefully wean off of those. Um, or reduce the dose at least. Reduce the dose. And Michael yeah. Daly, he had, he posted to our uh, holistic pet health group on Facebook page, uh, a story that he has really had great success with getting dogs off of Apoquel. So um, if you're um, battling with uh, a dog with that has some itchiness, it's all rooted in gut health. So you're yep. going to want some guidance um, on how to do that. And yep. any of Dr. Ruth's pro, uh, health coaches can help you with that because that's one of the basis is, uh, is that a word? Of, of, uh, of our, um, our services. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. And, um, yeah, that's that, uh, and, and itching is definitely scratching itching. That's the top reason that dogs come in to, um, to see me and, um, and it's a journey back to health because some of them have been on prednisone and Apoquil and, um, you know, now there's cytopoint for, um, and, and the body doesn't know how to react without those, those, um, drugs. So, um, we could go down another rabbit trail, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we could. Yes, we could. I <laughs> just talk all day. Michael's, uh, 
I haven't seen that. I'll have to, uh, yeah, he pasted it on his Facebook page um, and on the um, Holistic Pet Health Group by ah. Dr. Ruth. And I don't know how many members there are now, but it, it has exploded, which is um, wonderful that folks are realizing that um, that there is a better, not, I'm not going to say a better way, but um, an alternative way to um, uh, make your pet's health and your health much, much better um, and maybe need less vet bills down the line. And it's all stuff you can do at home with supplementation, um, mm -hmm. environmental practices, um, um, and then food. Food is the number one. Um, yeah. yeah. It, whenever I'm it's action number one yeah and and when i sit in for dr yeah. ruth you guys are going to get really tired of me talking about that because yeah i just can't stress well, it enough i mean it is it is key i mean it, it it is key i mean and i mean i do have some clients that come in and they don't want to cook and they don't not too many because i'm pretty adamant about you know well i'm you know we're presenting that this is why it's better and um but you know, and even Nayana has said with, um, even with her, um, that stress reduction, which is changing the diet, changing the stress of the body that, that essential oils and, um, whatever else it, it just, there's not, um, long-term lasting effects if the stress reduction doesn't happen. So if the diet change doesn't happen, which is a stress reduction. Um, and that was one of the things she said many years ago, right from the beginning. So, um, so diet is very, very important. And, very important. Um, and well, I think yeah, we if you probably... want to be committed to that, and yeah. I think we can probably end our session on that most important number one step. Um, if you have um, need some help with that, just get a holistic pet health coach. I think um, the link was posted in um, in the the feed earlier, and um, uh, we got a whole page okay. full of them. And we all love pets, and we all want to help. So please, please utilize that to your advantage. You'll be super glad that you do. And you'll make a friend along in the process because uh, my clients, it, here I am, it's 12.01. We've been, <laughs> we've been talking a long time. Um, but when I get a client that knows that there's a better way and there is, um, a, and they're willing to do something at home, I automatically have a connection with that person because, um, right. we, we both yeah. see things the same way. So, um, I love it. I love you, Deb. Thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to Thank add you, before we close? Um, I don't think so. I, um, nope. I, I think I've talked enough also. <laughs> No, me too. <laughs> but I um, thank you for the invite and thank you. I enjoyed it a, a great deal. And uh, it's a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. We'll see you around. Thanks all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.